Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we will look at the tools that you can use to modify the clip art that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture, the Picture Tools contextual tab appears with the Format tab displayed in the ribbon. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to quickly and easily format the inserted pictures. Note that this contextual tab will only appear when you actually have an image selected within your document. The buttons available in the Adjust group allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your document. You can click the Brightness drop-down button to choose another brightness setting for the selected image. Note as you roll over the different settings in the drop-down menu, you can see them applied to the image within the document. You can likewise click the Contrast button to increase or decrease the level of contrast, or gray level, that's used in the image. You can use the Recolor drop-down to select from one of the many preset coloring tints to apply it to the image. You could also use the More Variations Command Option button at the bottom of the drop-down menu to select a coloring choice from the palette of colors that appears to the side. You can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your document. In the Compress Pictures dialog box, you can view your compression settings by clicking the Options button. This will display your compression settings in a new window where you can set them as desired. Then just click OK to return to the Compress Pictures dialog box. If you only wish to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures within your document, you would need to check the Apply to Selected Pictures Only checkbox. Once you have the settings you desire, you can then click the OK button to compress the pictures in your document. Note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display, as smaller graphic files tend to load faster on the web. This will also not work with clip art, just photographs like JPEG and GIF files. The last button in the Adjust section is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset any changes that you have made to a picture. The next group in the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how that style will affect your selected image directly in your document before you actually click on the style to select it. So this is just a really nice improvement over previous versions of Word. Now if you wish to create a custom picture shape, then click the Picture Shape drop-down button and select the desired picture shape to use from the listing of available shapes. If you would like to add a border to your picture, then you can click the Picture Border drop-down button. From the drop-down menu, you can then click on the color of the border that you would like to use. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border, or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can also do that from the Picture Border drop-down button as well. If you roll over the Weight command in the Picture Border button's drop-down menu, you can then select a different line thickness to use from the side menu that displays. You could also select the Dashes command in the same drop-down menu, and then select a dash style to apply to the border if you would like. If you'd like to just clear a border, you can choose the No Outline command in the drop-down menu. You can click the Picture Effects drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories that are available for use on your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over the category shown to display a listing of assorted styles within that category. When you hold your mouse pointer over any style shown here, 
you can see it as a preview on the image within the document. You can then just click on the style you would like to apply in order to actually apply it to the picture. In the Arrange group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected image in the document. You can click the Position button to select one of the preset placement options for the selected image. If you have overlapping images in your document, you can either click the Bring to Front or Send to Back drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the images overlap each other within the stack. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button in order to select one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. You can click the Align button in order to choose one of the available alignment options. The Group button is not often allowed to be used in conjunction with images, but it's often useful when dealing with shapes. If you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single drawn unit. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected image in your document. In the Size group, you'll find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button to enable the cropping tool. To use it, click and drag on any part of the cropping handles that appear around the border of the graphic and drag inward to crop out the part that you don't want. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by just simply dragging the cropping handles back outward again. Or remember, you can always click the Reset Picture button at the left end of the Format tab in the Picture Tools Contextual tab in order to reset your image. Now once you've cropped it to the desired height and width, you can simply press Enter on your keyboard to set it. Also note, if you would like to change the height or the width of the image, you can use the height and width boxes that appear in the size group in order to change the dimensions of the selected image. That replicates the same functionality that we get by resizing using the resizing handles that appear. It's just a different way of doing it. Certainly it's more specific because you can input specific measurement units. Also notice that if you need to make very specific changes to the size of an image, you can do so through the Size dialog box. To open this dialog box, click the Size dialog box button in the lower right corner of the Size group in the ribbon. On the Size tab within the Size dialog box, you can enter the height and the width into the text boxes provided. Notice that if you want to adjust the relational aspect or the height to width ratio of the selected image, then you would need to ensure that the lock aspect ratio checkbox is deselected. Then you can enter the height and the width independently if desired. Note that if it's checked, which it is by default, when you manipulate either the height or the width, one will change in conjunction with the other according to the aspect ratio. So you would only need to adjust the height or the width. To adjust them independently, lock aspect ratio must be removed. Now in addition, you can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the rotation spinner buttons. In the Scales section, you can enter a percentage into either the Height or the Width boxes. The image will then be scaled by the selected percentage. 
and you can also check or uncheck the two available checkboxes in this section as needed when making your sizing and your scaling changes. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio and to determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. You can also use the spinner boxes that are located in the crop from section to crop an image with great precision if needed. Note that you can also click the reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any changes made to the size of the image. On the alt text tab you can enter a text description for the image if needed. This is often used for individuals who use a screen reader to view web page content. This should certainly be filled in with a description of the image if you plan on publishing the Word document to the web. Now once you've finished making your sizing adjustments, click the close button to close the size dialog box. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.